Today's the day, guys. It is done. We have LED tail lights. We upgraded the headlights. We went through all the 12 volt system. We upgraded it to the awesome 48 volt chins battery. It's got a display on the dash. This thing rocks. So let's give it a rip. What is up, everybody? We are back. And today we are going to be putting that battery in this golf cart now if you watched the last video you'd know that this actually got flooded we replaced most of the electronics except the batteries and now the batteries are acting up even though we replaced one and put a new balancer on there even that that balancer is making some kind of weird noise so we're not able to get much power at all it cuts off just going a few miles so those batteries are definitely not working well the other thing is when you have four separate batteries, it is harder to keep them balanced. When you charge them and discharge them, even though I have a balancer on there, uh, sometimes they do drift. So the best thing to do is have a battery where all 48 volts of the cells are handled by one BMS. And that's what's going on. This is the Chins. 51.2 volt 150 amp hour battery it is awesome i mean we're going to get tons of runtime, and one of my favorite things is it has this info display so we'll be able to see real time exactly how much power we're drawing and how much battery we have left when we're on those long trips all right so let's get this battery installed on tackle that We got to get these batteries cleared out of here. I've already redone the wiring and everything, so it looks nice and clean, uh, but we need to get this out. We're going to install the new 48 volt battery, and then we also have to get a 48 volt to 12 volt converter because we have accessories like blinkers and other lights on this that run on 12 volt. You will not want to hook those up directly to 48 volt or you'll uh, let the magic smoke out, they say. So we're going to put a uh, DC to DC converter on there as well. We're going to connect all that 12 volt stuff up to that converter. And, uh, and that's it. This is actually really simple. And I hope this video helps you guys uh, upgrade your lead acid uh, or your small batteries up to these big chins batteries so you can take these golf carts for miles and miles and miles and still have plenty of runtime left over. Now your mileage may vary, but what I know about most golf carts is you're gonna have two big wires, a positive and a negative, and these are going to your controller and then essentially your motor. So these are nice big fat wires and they're gonna draw the most power. The other thing you're gonna have is a charge port or a charge cable and that's what i have here and it's an sae connection that i put in that we connect the charger up to so be aware of that and then the other thing the last thing is you're going to have some 12 volt powered accessories possibly the newer ones might run on 48 volt i could see that but a lot of your older golf carts are going to still run on 12 volt so we have a 12 volt circuit and that's what that looks like. Let's get these batteries out. Any water in there? I don't hear any, thankfully. So these still might, we might be able to salvage one or two of these batteries, use them for something outside, something not serious, maybe a gate battery or something like that but i would not put these in your garage if they've gotten salt water in them cool so that's our space nice and opened up we'll get our wires out of the way and we are going to put this big battery in here 
All right, like I said, you gotta get some help to move this battery. It is very heavy. Now, the other thing you wanna consider is where your terminals are. So the terminals are on this side of the battery and most of our electronics are on this side of the golf cart. So we're gonna put the terminals on this side, this side that way. Right now, let's go. Nice, strong handles. Whoa, it's heavy. Let's see, go that way just a tad, there it is. All right, so it didn't fit in there exactly because we have these kind of slanted I-beams going across. So a quick fix was to take some two by three and we just lay that in there and hopefully we're gonna set the battery right on top of that and it should work out great, so let's try it. Watch your switch. Oh yeah. Look at that. All right, line it up so it's in the center. Perfect. All right. So that literally goes in there just right. It's below the surface, so the seat will still close. We can still hit this switch, and then we can drill in these tabs into that oak wood. And what we'll do is we'll mount this oak wood to the golf cart and we'll mount the battery to the oak wood and we'll be all set. All right, we are running out of light for today. So let's pick this up tomorrow, guys. All right, so let's talk about this converter. Always check your voltages. So I hooked up 52 volts to this converter and then I'm gonna test the voltage coming out of the converter and it's 21.4 volts. So that's very bad. This is supposed to be 12 volts coming out of this uh, no matter what you put into it between 36 and 72 volts so it's not converting the voltage correctly now this guy is a little bit more robust you can get these on amazon let's test the voltage on this one also the wiring on this is a little more simple and they have a wiring diagram on that so essentially we're going to have two inputs from our battery so that's going to go on the battery terminal we're going to have a fuse and that's going to protect the wire gauge so you match the fuse with your wire gauge in this case it's a 14 gauge wire and we have a 10 amp fuse then i'm going to put of course the shrink wrap on but i wanted to show you i soldered those on there then it, it's going to go into this and convert it to 12 volt so the nice thing is this actually has four wires so two inputs two outputs makes it a little more simple and you're going to have your 12 volt uh, negative and your 12 volt positive and those will both go to those terminal blocks that I showed you this also has a fuse because I want to protect this device as well so if we have a short circuit from a bulb or any of the flashers or electronics on the system it'll pop this fuse and then if we have any issue with this it'll pop this fuse so let's get this shrink wrap on here to protect these wires and then we'll hook it up and check the voltage BEA beautiful and let's hook up some power so we got our so we got our power supply let's turn it back up to 52 volts or somewhere around there your range for these batteries will be 58.4 volts all the way down to the low 40s so anywhere in there will work for testing Connect our negative up, connect our positive up, make sure we're not, woo, a little spark there, because we're charging up this, probably the capacitors in there or something that's storing some power. And let's 
check the voltage on this. Hey, 12.2 volts. All right, that's gonna be perfect. All right, let's get this thing wired up. Now our battery again is off, so we won't have to worry about any of these connections short circuiting until we get it connected. Got it connected up. Let's double check now. We're gonna turn our power on and we're gonna check our voltages. So we want 12 volts across this circuit. Hey, we got 12.1 volts, so perfect. All right, let's clean this wiring up and get this all attached so it doesn't move around and uh, we'll start checking out the rest and getting the uh, screen installed. Let's run our display wire while we have a few other zip ties to get connected up. Connects right there. And we'll clean up all this last final wiring here and run this wire up to the front. We got all the wires cleaned up, looking good on this side. We're gonna make this nice and easy. We'll have access to the back and we're just gonna mount this display right on that lid. The wire comes out the left side so it won't really be in the way at all. And that way I don't have to take the whole dash apart. So let's do that. We'll go like right here. Obviously we wanna make sure this Nice and square, looks good, centered, let's go with it. There we go. Boom, and that's our shape. And now we're going to cut that out with the oscillating tool. like that cool oh, it turned hard let's scrape all that off it's like molten plastic just like that beautiful all right Perfect. All right, we got the wire fished up. We drilled a little hole in the back of this glove box at the top there so we can run the wire in. And now we just have to connect it up. All right, turn her on. Hey, hey she works. Very nice. The only other thing we'll do is we'll get some glue gun and we'll just seal around here and make sure it's a little bit more secure so it doesn't pop out or anything. But that's a nice snug fit, and with a little glue, it won't go anywhere. Check out that hat. You like that? <laughs> Today's the day, guys. It is done. Let's give it a rip. Just pulled out of the driveway, and uh, I really wanna see what kind of power this thing has. When you have a bigger battery, it gives you I guess more acceleration because there's less voltage sag, especially when you compare that to uh, lead acid batteries. So uh, let's go, all right. <laughs> oh yeah, so instant torque, no problem. This thing would be able to go up uh, hills on the golf course. Also tells me how far I can go. So at this rate, which is about mid throttle, I got 
a, almost eh, about three hours of runtime, two and a half hours. We're going uphill, so it's going to go down a little bit. As soon as we hit that hill, we'll probably climb back up. Yeah, so four hours just cruising around. You know what? I think we're going to have to get my father-in-law out here and uh, see what he thinks. Hello, folks. How are oh. you doing? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the maiden voyage test. Let's give her some power. We're excited. This is an upgraded older golf cart, but it is really good. It's flying. <laughs> oh, yeah. Love it. It's smooth. So how far are you thinking you can go on this thing now? I don't know. You have to tell me. You're the expert, but I think I, think I can go quite a ways, but you, I don't know. You think you can go from the retirement home and back? <laughs> <laughs> the assisted living, you mean? <laughs> the I'm doctor's kidding. office, the hospital. Got to mess with my father-in-law. The fishing hole. I could take it to the fishing hole. <laughs> could take it to the drinking hole. Uh, Crump's Landing. Yeah, so you had lead acid batteries. What's the difference between uh, these lithium batteries and those lead acid batteries? Well, I think the first thing is the weight. They're so much lighter, and I got one battery instead of six or four, whatever, what I had six, I think. Lithium phosphate's gonna give me longer range, more speed, and let, no maintenance, no water. That's right. And I'll tell you what, water was a pain in the butt. Especially in Florida with the heat, it evaporates quicker than you think, and before you know it, your batteries are dead. So I won't have to worry about any water, any maintenance on the batteries. I don't think, do I? No. Nope. Just keep it, uh, you know, never let it really go below 20, 20 30 percent battery uh, charge, and uh, she'll last you a long time. I think we looked at the uh the amount of charge cycles was up to 5,000 charge cycles. So this battery, uh, will probably be your last. In the range with the power that it has, um, I probably won't have to charge it, but once uh, <laughs> once every other month or something, because yep. you want it to go down a little, right, before you charge it? Yeah, you don't have to charge it every day or anything. Just uh, charge it one every month or two and make sure she's got power. Well, that's another maintenance feature because the lead acid batteries, you had to charge them if you used it for five minutes. They told me to charge it every time you get done. Yep. So I don't have to worry about that either. Nope. Nope. All right. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for joining us. Hit that like and subscribe button on the bottom if this was helpful. And we'll see you on the next one. So long now. <laughs> see you next time.